Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing this new brushless GPS drone from Holy Stone. This is the HS-175D. We'll take a closer look at that and then take it out for a test flight right after this. Alright guys, so let's take a closer look at the drone and then we'll get it outside for the all-important flight review. Now this is a, a new drone from Holy Stone. It appears to be more on the more basic end. There's no stabilized gimbal. As far as I know, there's no EIS or electronic image stabilization either. The camera just tilts 90 degrees. And as you can see here, it has um, some of the features listed here on the Vox HD camera. So it, the most it's going to be is 1080p. Sometimes that HD is just 720p. I'm, so I'm not sure of the resolution of the camera. But if this, if this did anything 4K, I would think they would advertise on the box 2.4 gigahertz communication GPS and a 90 degree camera tilt so pretty basic so I imagine this drone is not going to be too terribly expensive since it isn't necessarily feature packed but Holy Stone drones are usually pretty good and the fact it's got GPS that's a big uh, you know a thing to a lot of people and the in having brushless motors it's not a brush drone so that's really nice so as long as the price is reasonable, this ought to be pretty popular, assuming that it does fly well. Now, it, it comes with a rather nice case. A lot of the Holy Stones come with this. It's nice because you can just pick it up and go. Now, I have it, it zipped o it zipper open, so I can't hold it here without everything falling out. But you can grab it and go. So you don't have to worry about having a special bag or something to put the drone in. So let's take a closer look here at the drone. You get the drone spare battery in this one now, I don't know if they have a single battery version but the one I happen to have here is two batteries There's another battery here in the drone you've got a uh, charging cable here and then the controller and this charging cable is probably for the controller there's a separate ones so I'll show you back here for the are special for the battery so let's go ahead and take a look at the drone they won't take a look at the other stuff more closely and then we'll get it outside so obviously this is foldable as most all these drones are nowadays I've not weighed this but I'm pretty sure this is gonna come in at greater than 250 grams so maybe here in a moment I can fire up the scale I see it sitting over there and we can weigh this um, but I imagine this is gonna exceed the 250 it the battery that they, they stick in it has a little red piece here that's so it doesn't actually accidentally get powered up while it's shipping and just slides in there it is a 2S battery that I'm certain of. And let's see if I back it up here and try to focus in the camera. It's seven point, it just may not show it because it's just like written into the plastic here. It's 7.6 volt, 1700 milliamp hour. 7.6 volt means that this is a, is a high voltage LiPo. Uh, 7.4 is what they usually rate a regular LiPo battery at. So it might be a little bit more power than a standard 2S. In terms of the flight time, again, I'm not exactly sure what they advertise on that. Uh, we'll get a better idea of that whenever we take it out for the flight review here in a moment. You've got your power button here on the top. And it does have an optical flow camera. I'm going to focus again there to make sure that everything shows up. So this will help hold position if you lose GPS or if you were happen to fly in this indoors. And then here is your HD camera, which just has that motorized tilt from straight level to probably close to all the way down looks like it will go all the way down at least by the sound of the servo there so you've also got some LEDs that are probably white here in the front and on the sides I'm not really sure if there's LEDs like in that I don't think that is we'll have to see where that'd be an odd spot for them but there there may be some LEDs that light up here on the bottom of the landing gear on the rear is probably my best guess on that and it does have an SD card slot so I'll have to see you know if there's any capacity limits on that but thankfully it does so you insert that card right in there it does not come with a card so you will need to provide that yourself but that means at least you're not recording a Wi-Fi feed to the app on your phone which is always going to drop frames and not be as good of quality so it's anytime I see an SD card in a drone that's a huge plus in my book and here are your brushless motors and your swing out props so in a minute here if I remember I will weigh this here is an extra battery we don't need to look at that again since I showed you the one that was already in the drone 
here is your uh, controller you look like you have a photo and video buttons here on the top this is going to be to go up and down with the camera tilt and a power button and then you flip this up you put your phone in and then here is your handles to hold on to it so the phone goes in here and here's some stuff like a return to home an automatic uh, takeoff right over here and landing and this one here is going to be either your compass calibration button or it's going to be headless mode they don't both of those are sort of a compass type symbol they use on these drones so i couldn't tell you which one though lots of times the compass calibration is started on these drones do stick combinations but sometimes they do put them on a button. So I can't tell you which one that is. Um, until I, if I look at the instruction manual here in a moment, maybe I can find the diagram and tell you guys what that does. And then here is that micro USB charging port. So this is a rechargeable controller, so you don't have to worry about providing any batteries. And they do have an antenna on the back that flips up, but I can't tell you if this is real or not. Because I can't see if there's a wire in here or not. Um, I don't even want to guess. It'd be odd to put such a, a flip out camera on the back if it didn't work. But they do a lot of, a lot of these drones come with stuff that is just for looks. But that would be sort of odd. So my guess is put that up because I can't tell if a wire comes in on the side. I'm just kind of 50 50 on whether it is. But again, that'd be really weird to put a, uh, an antenna on the rear like that, which is very uncommon to put that on there and make that extra design if it's just for looks. So I'm thinking there probably is an antenna. We wouldn't really be able to know unless you took the, the back cover off with all these screws and actually dug in there to see if there's a wire running up into here. But my guess is it probably is. Thing is, that's gonna be an easy thing to forget to flip up. So if this does work, I could definitely see myself going out and fly this and forget and leave it down. And if this has an antenna wire, it's gonna definitely affect the range of the drone. And then let's go look at the accessories inside here. Let's just unzip this. And I know they give you two charging cables so you can charge up both batteries. These are USB. And they, they, this little piece here slides up the side of the battery until it, it, until it, power, uh, it plugs in and then you charge it. So without getting out of the bag, that's all you got to do there and then it has a, a red and green light I believe it will flash until it, it lets you know that it's completely charged Again, it is USB so unfortunately it's going to be rather slow to charge and there's another little bag here that's got a, a screwdriver in it and some extra props looks like it's you know it's several sets hopefully it's a full set in there but the, that's just so you can take this off you need a screwdriver if you want to uh, to take these screws out to remove a prop and replace it and then let's take a quick look at the uh, instruction manual if I can get it out of here and we'll see what that if it shows what that button is most of the time these instruction manuals from Holy Stone are pretty good it says calibrating the gyro as both sticks down and to the left calibrating the compass okay so that that is the compass button then so this button will enter you in a compass calibration it's not headless mode i always thought headless mode was dumbed and put on gps drone because your orientation is not really that important because you're not going to lose it due to orientation you can just simply call it back home with the gps so it's really sort of a silly thing that they do put on some of them but that is the compass calibration so no weird stick combos looks like the app we're going to use on this let's make sure that we're focused in on the manual is the hs or holy stone gps v5 app so i'll have to download that you can scan these qr codes here or punch that into the play or the store or the google uh, the apple store and actually download that app so i will get a screenshot of this app to include either now or when i got to the flight review telling you uh let you see what it looks like just so you don't mistakenly download the wrong app they mentioned the TF card here. This will support up to 64 gigabytes. So you can go with a pretty large one. And then here is the button layout. Everything that I said it did was correct, including the antenna. Uh, the compass calibration is a long press. So it actually is multifunctional. Headless mode, it does have it. So I was right on both 
uh, aspects. The button is both. A short press enters you into headless mode. So you get a long press that to enter into compass calibration. So kind of interesting, it does both of those things. That should be pretty much all the basics on that. Let me go grab my scale and let's see if we can see how much this weighs. Because that 250 grams is really important. And I reviewed a, a Tomzon drone a month or so back that was under 250 grams and brushless and it was never advertised to be that and i told them hey you need to let people know this because that's very very important um not so much in the united states um, because you have to still abide by the same rules you just don't have to worry about registering putting an faa number on it and you don't have to worry about paying that five dollars right now so it's really rather insignificant in the united states compared to some places where you literally can't fly very easily without um, special permissions. Um, but when you're under 250 grams, you're usually just fine. So make sure you're, you do have the battery in when you weigh this. And the only other thing I don't have is a micro SD card, but that's gonna be well under a gram. Yeah, this is, this is um, let's see, this is two, uh, what does it say, 214. So this is well under, I was way off. It felt heavier to me, but it shows you how hard it is to gauge weight. So again, this is, 214 grams it's only got to be under 250 so this drone does not require would not require any special registration in the united states again with the, with the sd card in you might hit 215 on this and that's well under again you got 250 gram weight limit and the more i'm holding this now that where i'm realizing this is pretty light i almost need to pick up my mavic mini or my femi x8 mini which is a little over because of the battery on that one and because they don't have the pro version and hold it and then you can sort of get an idea but we just pick something up sometimes it's hard to read to uh, gauge the weight and i thought it was a little bit over oh, 270 or something it's actually well under so that's really cool 214 grams we're good so this is important if you're in canada maybe and you have access to buy this through the amazon canada store or something man go for it assuming this that this flies well wait till we see that part but Otherwise, you don't have to worry about those restrictions at that weight. All right, that's great. All right, I think that wraps up the table review. We don't need to spend a ton of time on this. We've already got about 12 minutes in. So let's go ahead and get outside now for the flight review and see how this flies and how the camera works. So I'll be right back. All right, guys, so let's take the HS-175D up for the test flight now. I got it on my helipad, which I use to help determine the return to home accuracy, which I like to test on these drones. So it is a rather windy day, especially at times. So that could affect its accuracy because you don't usually fly, you know, like to fly in really high winds. It's not really high, but at times the wind gusts, if you, catch, if you catch a wind gust enough, you know, that could throw it off on its return to home accuracy. Now, really quickly, a few things I wanted to mention that I didn't, uh, that I missed during the table review was, there are two speed rates with this drone. If you press in on the right stick, hear that one and two. Well, I'm going to start out in two because of the wind gust. And also, I mentioned the camera just is advertised as an HD camera, so you think that's going to be 1080p. But according to the specs in the manual, it can do 2.7K video. And I don't know what frame rate that's going to be. Probably going to be rather low. You know, 25 to 30 is probably what I'm guessing. Probably closer to 25. But um, that's interesting that they don't they don't advertise and it does supposedly take 4k photos um i don't know if i have a chance to test the photos today but that you know i don't know if that's probably upscale but again i'm surprised they didn't advertise that because usually if a drone's got a 4k photo capability they put 4k drone because they want you to think you're getting a 4k video capable drone so all right let's let's uh, go ahead and get it connected to the wi-fi and then we will um do the compass calibration and get it up in the air. Now I've got some green lights in the rear, which means I've got a GPS lock. They start out being solid red and I am bound, but the controller turned on. So the first thing we're gonna do here is I'm going to uh, start a screen recording here so we can start recording the screen. And then let's go into the, um, the settings on my phone and we're gonna go into the Wi-Fi. And we're going to go to connect to the, excuse me, I went to the wrong one there, to the Holy Stone 5G. It's weird. They advertise 2.4 on the box, which is probably than what the transmitter uses. But I'm surprised they didn't advertise that as 5G just because 
that's they usually give you the specs for the Wi-Fi connection and not the um, let's see make sure I don't have something connected here got some weird message on there oh just telling me the uh, that that's okay we have no internet access that's what that little box I think was saying and let's go ahead now and let's open up that app that app is the HS GPS v5 app we're gonna say yeah while we're using it we can do this stuff and hopefully we get some since some magnetic declination is detected obviously we need to do the compass calibration so let's see here app instructions let's go to preparations yeah it wants us to calibrate that's why I usually wait they tell you you long press the compass symbol here and that will do the compass calibration but many times the app will Force you to do it as well as we can see here if it doesn't or if you're not connected to the app then you use that button if you wanted to fly without the app connected that's why they give you the option to do it on the controller so let's go ahead and we're going to press the calibrate button and oh this is actually that's the take that back that is the uh gyro calibration now we do the compass calibration it's going to do both the first one is a calibrate level and then we're going to do the compass one it's going to force you to do both so they want you to do the horizontal calibration now and these rear lights are going to flash and they should start going faster once it now see them going fast that means now you go upright and then once they go solid then that means we've we're done with the compass calibration and we are very simple they've gotten really good at these compass calibrations on these drones they used to be a real headache three or four years ago <clears throat> all right so just going to go through some of the menu options here Got a pile of vinyl in front of me here that's going to be for our fence <laughs> and we should be set to go now we're going to start recording some video i have a 32 gig just standard card in there it should be able to handle this this video bit rate i would hope and we'll go ahead and start recording some video and it is recording and we'll put up the video on board and, and the screen recording too for you guys so you can uh, see how the app looks it looks rather basic and let's go ahead and do an auto takeoff. I see if, it, if, if you have to unlock the props. The instructions were unclear about that. All right, I think you have to unlock them. That's both sticks down and in, I believe. There we go. Now go ahead and press the auto takeoff. Let's, these, these toy or lower cost drones, they tend to be a little bouncy when you take off. You saw how close it got to the ground. Let's just see though how stable it is. There's a decent amount of wind. And we also want to make sure that it doesn't toilet bowl. Let's lower the, the gimbal or the camera down a little bit. And it's going to be a little choppy. You can see as it's lowering down towards me, guys. Again, there's no stabilization on this drone, so keep that in mind. The video is going to be, you know, is what it is. It's not going to be super, it's not going to be stable. But let's at least see if the quality is decent. So let's go ahead. It looks like it's stable to me. I don't see toilet bowling. So let's go ahead and just do kind of a, a droney here. But it's going to be tough to do it one and really keep it in, as you can see keep me in there because the uh there's no stabilization so something i didn't check that i want to always want to check on these drones is to make sure we don't have any beginners mode because we almost always do so let's go into the gear here and see yeah we're in beginners mode let's see if it'll let us disable that now we got a max height of 100 and a max radius of 500 and that's all meters let's click save 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 a successful so we shouldn't be we shouldn't hit any uh geo fence now i'm going to raise the gimbal or the camera back up because we're going to be looking at the ground if we don't raise that up so from what i'm seeing i got a good wi-fi feed the camera looks good i don't see a bunch of jello just seeing the natural wobble as you expect it flies, I tell you what, it flies outstanding. I mean, this is just an absolute breeze to fly. It's not, it's just really responsive to the sticks. It's very smooth. I mean, the second right here, it's, it's quick. But I mean, even a beginner, I think would have no problem flying this. This really flies fantastic. It, it's very responsive when I let off the sticks. And it breaks well. I mean, some of these lower cost drones will tend to, you break and then they oh they gotta fly back to where you left the sticks and they're just they don't break well and they try to overcorrect 
this is just perfect. When I let off the stick, look, boof. It, and that, that stops like, I mean, like if I were flying my DJI, uh, my, my, my Mini or something, you know, I, it's got good power. Yeah, this is really nice. And if you happen to skip the table review, this was, weighs well under 250 grams. So there is no issues with this drone flying this just about anywhere in the world because it's well under those that 250 gram limit. The Wi-Fi, I get a little bit of a pause there, but boy, I mean, and this is not far. We are only out 53 meters, but I've had many drones start to give me Wi-Fi problems at even that distance. Fly over the cemetery here. We're up, we're only up, I'm gonna go up about 20 meters, about 30. I can still see it there very easily. We are over, we actually went past the cemetery. What I wanna do now is we're out about 170 meters. Let's call it back home and let's see how it acts and how accurate it is. Is it gonna turn around? So here it is. We have a very nice line of sight. And I, I couldn't tell you without lowering the camera if it's, if it's flying sideways or, it kind of gives me the feeling it's flying sideways. Here it is. Oh, it looks like it overshot us. No, I don't think it is. Well, I'll tell you what, it really looks, it really flies good. It makes you think, it looks like you're flying a, a Mavic Air or something in terms of its just size. Really, the, the Mavic Mini. I'm going to make sure we don't have to correct this. It's getting close to the stuff. I don't want it to come down and land. Looks like it's going to be okay, but it is going to be off. And the grass is going to confuse it. So that that is not very good. Now it is pretty windy, so I, that's why I said that at the beginning. The wind could throw this drone off more than usual. But with these lower cost drones, these return to homes can be hit and miss. If I do this again here in a moment, it may land on the edge of the, of the helipad. It's just, that's not very good. That is off by a good six or seven feet. But it's certainly not like unacceptable. It's just not good. But um, keep in mind, this thing is only using GPS coordinates and a, and a barometer probably too to help it know when it's on the ground and the gyro. But it doesn't have any kind of precision landing. So keep that in mind. Let's put the camera back up. So it's going to be hit and miss on its accuracy. And when Gus comes along, the more expensive drones have you know, a camera on the bottom. And this does have an optical flow camera, but it's able to use the app and, and it's AI to recognize, you know, the similarities in the ground or on some drones that are actually looking for a circular object like this. Um, and it's looking for that helipad essentially. And it marks that, sees it, and then it's able to try to land. This drone doesn't have that capability at this price point. That's stuff that they have to build into the drone, especially the app. It's really, it's not an easy thing to do. So even though it does have an optical flow camera, that camera is just looking at the ground to help it hold position. It doesn't have the software programming to recognize um, the ground or an object to know how to do return to home uh, precision landing. All right, let's go ahead and unlock the props again. And let's just go ahead. It says a report on the app, the return points been updated. So we know this is a new spot. Let's just give a throttle and manually take off. Now, because it's windy today, I'm probably not going to... I'm sure this drone's got some smart features, I would think, though I didn't remember seeing it in the manual. But let's look here and see. Yeah, it's got some active tracking. It can track you actively, which is using AI. Oh, well, essentially, it's using the app, I should say, to follow you. And then you've got the one, the more accurate one, which is using the GPS in your phone. And then it's got uh, waypoints and does have circle me. The reason why I'm worried about using some of those is because it's windy today, that's going to probably cause this drone to not do as well. And this is not really the greatest conditions to fly it in, but we'll, maybe we'll try it here in a moment. I usually do test that. I just don't want to be completely unfair on a drone and test some feature in, in windy conditions that you typically wouldn't fly in. But unfortunately, tomorrow I'll see even windier than today with 25, six mile per hour wind gusts and 
really um really hot in the mid and upper 90s so we got a storm coming here you guys you can probably hear sometimes you may hear thunder off this way so i want to get this video done too that's a little crunched on time another reason why i wasn't sure if i would be messing with testing those other smart features but we might be able to go out over here and test a couple of things here while the ground's still dry and I got enough room yeah I think we have got I can't tell on the battery here I'm trying to read the little meter boy that's it's green so we've got some good flight time out of this I would think I just don't know how much it's a little hard to see all right, let's, let's, let's do it here. Let's go ahead and try that. I'm going to turn the, the drone towards me. Let's try one of these features. Let's go in here. And let's try to see if we can do the active one. Non opt. You have to turn GPS mode off. I remember that from some of the other drones. Some of these lower cost drones, you can't do the active tracking in GPS mode. I'm not even going to mess with that. Let's try the regular one. The, um, you know, your good drones your evos and your dji drones and that they can actively track in gps mode okay make sure the surrounding feeling blah 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 confirm let's just see if i move this way does the drone turn or is it if i walk towards it it's going to back up and yes it is <clears throat> let me lower the camera down so it can get me in here let's go off this way so yeah it's following me and it's actually doing a pretty darn good job. Look how it's... Let me stop. It's still going some. Let's see if it catches on here. That's kind of weird. It almost looks like it's in orbit mode. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on. I didn't fret it orbit mode, but that's kind of strange. Let's just... Uh, well, that's what it looks like it's doing is orbit mode. Well, that's weird. <laughs> Let me uh, press this again. Maybe I did something weird. I didn't think I pressed orbit there. Unless, unless I missed the press. That was a, well, I'll tell you what, that was a nice orbit. But at first it was following me. And then all of a sudden it just kept going. You, said, you guys saw that. That was weird. These, these toy drones, and this is still a toy for me. They can be a bit unpredictable on this stuff. Let me try the orbit mode again. Now see, I didn't have that up here. You've got some things to, to do here they have to be up above 15 meters first let's see i am up so they got to be up over 15 meters to do this so yeah that was an orbit mode i wasn't in orbit then i don't know why the drone was doing that you can change the direction and then i think you go ahead and press that little launch button and let's see it's sending the data uh, there it goes. By the way, that was weird. It was doing this orbit. Now, that's, a, that's a pretty... I didn't really mess with setting the diameter. That's a really small diameter. I just wanted to see how it works. But that gives us a chance to see in my head cam and the video how well it's doing. Let's see if I can give it inputs. You know, canceling this is a bit weird. So I was almost like I need to press orbit again. And then it cancels it, see? Yeah, that was strange. I was definitely doing follow me mode. But it just kept orbiting, and I was like, well, I think anybody would be confused by that. Yeah, follow me, you shouldn't have to be as high. Let's see if we can do that again. Let's try the... Yeah, so we were definitely not in orbit while ago, but boy, it was... It just kept going in a nice circle, and I was standing still, so... Even though I thought the, orbit, the uh, follow me was working well... It did not stop. It just kept going. So I'm uh, going to try it again here. I was also concerned while I go, I wouldn't have enough battery. Sometimes it's difficult to fly these drones and test all these features in enough time. But this battery is still probably around half. You can see that dark clouds off to the north, guys. Feels nice out here, but we definitely got a storm headed this way or close by. Let's go back this way. And it's mostly yawing, but it is moving slightly. So it's doing a pretty good job. Let's just see if I stop now. Does it stop this time? I think it is. I'm not really sure why it kept orbiting on the last time. 
it's still in it so let's go off this way and again it's just yawing to follow me and that's what you want it to do yeah and it doesn't need to move much because I'm not exactly out running this thing but if I go far enough it should should start to move and it looks like it is very slowly sometimes these drones tend to rock because they're trying to not go too quick and keep their distance and this drone's done a pretty good job it's not rocking really bad which on an unstabilized camera rocking is going to be a very bad thing so all right I think that did a pretty good job I'm going to press that again did that stop it almost looks like it started it up again no I'm out I can control it again I don't like unless I'm missing something I don't like the how you stop this, these modes you have to like press that mode again and that's kind of goofy there should be a little and I maybe I'm missing it but there should be a little icon you can press to cancel it okay so I mean I gotta tell you what this thing flies great and from what I can see the camera's pretty darn good again at this price point you can't necessarily expect it but the lack of stabilization it'd be nice if this at least had EIS unfortunately that usually requires an onboard processor and that's not cheap so sometimes they hand that off to the phone and the phones and the app program that usually doesn't do a particularly good job but a modern smartphone can do EIS but that's a lot of grunt work to do that and run the Wi-Fi feed and the app and everything going on on the phone so all right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back and just tell it to do a return to home here and let's see how it works on one more return to home and we'll wrap this video up guys so again as I was saying I think this drone's really nice for the way it flies just amazing I mean I, I'm not lying I've flown for five years and drones don't usually fly this well at this price point so I'm really happy with the drones the way it flies and again the camera looks good to me and there's not a lot of jello that I can see the Wi-Fi the FPV feed has been very solid but I have not really tried to push it and the smart features seem to work really well aside from that little glitch with the, the orbiting when it shouldn't have but I, I'm impressed with it I just if you are okay with unstabilized video and you're on a budget this drone might be perfect for you let's go ahead and let's do a return to home and it's going to face it's kind of weird it it's it flies backwards I think let's see what it's <laughs> and let's see if it does any better this time I haven't looked at the settings there to see if there's any way to to adjust the return to home height I didn't see that a while ago well this is gonna be off by a decent amount again but we're okay we're not gonna hit anything right here I don't think unless we get a big gust and it flies into the so you know we're looking at a good six plus feet maybe a little more this time so doing it twice and we're getting about the same distance tells me that this drone doesn't have the particularly most accurate return to home it's okay in terms of it's not gonna like come back and land you know uh, a lot away from you or a, a yard away from you if you're flying from your house like me but it is not landing on the helipad now I could do this again and it could but the fact that we were off six to seven to eight feet on both return to homes tells me this just doesn't have the most accurate return to home there are those white lights in the front I mentioned they would have and of course those rear lights which I told you guys earlier I thought were uh, probably on the rear landing gear they are gr green and they also have red in there too and I can see a blue light up in here but you can see up through the sides I'm not exactly sure what's up with that it's just in the inside of the drone all right guys that should wrap up the review of the holy stone hs 175d this is a fantastic little very lightweight sub 250 gram drone let's make sure we stop recording the video here so i don't lose it I throw the drone down and you just do a press on the uh, controller and we stop recording so that if you don't stop and you power stuff off there's a good chance it's going to corrupt what's on your video card or if it's recording to the app and then you lose everything it's all corrupted so Got that stopped again fantastic flying very lightweight drone uh, highly recommend the way it flies camera looks good to me it's just a matter of the only two complaints is one is obvious the unstabilized video 
if that's not a big deal to you, or if you're only interested in photos, which the photos should look fine, even though I didn't take any of this video, then I would recommend this drone. And its return home accuracy is not very good, but it's not bad enough that I would say, oh, uh, well, you can't buy it. It's not landing 20 feet away or something. But if you were, if you were taking off from, let's say, a, a dock on a lake and you didn't have much room and you needed to land, well, you wouldn't want to use this drone. You know, we need one with precision landing, and those are going to be just fine. They're going to land within a foot at the most of, the, of where it took off, probably six inches. So, All right, guys, that wraps up the review. Be sure if you're new to the channel, you consider subscribing. While you do that, click the bell so you're notified when I do upload new videos. And as always, guys, have a wonderful day. The power of the dark side, 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 side.